growth. So this is probably what we talk about, this group of folks like nonstop here, like basically how are we scaling these games? How are we bringing users into them? What's working? What's not working? What are the trends right now? We'll cover this in two parts. I'd love to start with Web3 native marketing and then talk about from there mainstream marketing tactics for games and whether or not these work for Web3. So let's start with Web3 native marketing. All of you were kind of recruited to Uptick for your background in different types of Web3 native marketing. So let's start there. Matt, I'll go to you first. Like when you think about the Web3 native marketing tactics that are the most important for projects to focus on today, if you're trying to reach specifically Web3 natives, like where should they be focusing their efforts and what are bad uses of resources? I'll start with the second half of your question, which is normally paid UA is just terrible. It doesn't really convert when any person normally sees like any th ads about NFT gaming or Web3 gaming, anything you think scam or just stay away. One of the ways that I've done it in the past is working with a lot of like content creators, KOLs, influencers. Normally they're able to build themselves some sort of audience or community where they are trusted, right? And therefore essentially putting like a stamp of approval on any one thing they touch. So that's one of the strategies that we have used in the past very successfully, which is essentially activating niche creators or relevant creators to a game. And essentially, you know, whether it's making a creator program, just doing a sponsorship campaign, or even working with a small cohort of creators and making them ambassadors for a game, which is really powerful, has really shown really good results. One of the things that I'd like to do in the future, and we're a little bit early on this, is essentially bringing your traditional Web2 gaming creators onto Web3. The only problem with this is we have the contacts, we know them, but they don't really want to touch Web3 gaming yet because when you think about traditional content creators, their bosses are actually their audience, if you really think about it. So the opportunity cost of, let's say, coming on onto the scene it's actually just making their communities incredibly upset. So I think we have been talking with them for a long time, but I think in the future, once the games get better and these creators know that they can defend them a little bit better, and it's like, look, it's undeniable that this game is amazing. You have to try it, right? Then I think we're going to see a lot more of that avenue become like a reality. But at the moment, it's just not possible, frankly. If I had to give one game a shout out for how well they've done, it's Parallel. They've done an amazing job of kind of like aligning themselves with a lot of Hearthstone pros and, you know, kind of bringing them into the fold. And we saw that with those creators where Blizzard, the community, had a ton of backlash on them, kind of like partnering with that game. But I think they kind of were prepared for that. And Parallel does have the chops. They've kind of gone over the hump and they did get a portion of the Hearthstone community at least paying attention to Parallel. So I think that's the early case there for that. That's a good segue. And I'd like to go a little bit deeper on content creators and K-Walls. You know, you mentioned Parallel and, and Hearthstone. You know, I'm a big TCG nerd, so I follow a lot of traditional TCG content creators. And I also know a little behind the scenes of like how badly they're compensated. I would say like one of the hot topics this week in the Web3 Gaming is Dead conversation is the role in efficacy and I don't know if morality is too strong a word, but there's a lot of controversy around content creators in Web3 Gaming right now. And I think part of it ties to this funding of like, there is a lot of liquidity to fund marketing efforts for Web3 Gaming, but there's also not a lot of content creators that are covering it. Like a lot of mainstream content creators are still a little allergic to it. So there's kind of there's this opportunity where those content creators that are more open-minded or sincerely passionate about Web3 Gaming it can be a candidly a bit of a lucrative opportunity right now, but that also brings them some heat for covering and some of the rates that some of these content creators are working with. Jerry, you're obviously very close to this, like your expertise in this area is part of why we brought you onto the team. What's your assessment of the current health of Web3 content creators, how they're interacting with game teams and what teams should be looking for as far as like, what does it mean to have a successful relationship with content creators for Web3 Gaming? Yeah, I think a lot of it is value and like brand alignment, right? It's a good time to be a content creator in Web3 after a very long time of basically getting zero income or zero revenue for your content business. Now with the market sentiment picking up, it is a great time to be a content creator. But that means that people are taking on deals that maybe don't really fit them. And they're taking deals that maybe don't speak to like what their audience is. So 
if I'm a game, I'm looking for somebody who doesn't take on a ton of paid work. If you look at some of the Web3 content creators, like their whole feed is just sponsor, 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 sponsor. I'm not looking for that because when you're a consumer of that content, you get kind of tired of like endless amounts of paid content, right? right? So I'm looking for people who have a community, you know, within the realm that I'm building and somebody who wants to be in this with me for, you know, a period of time, not just a one-off content shoot or anything like that. But so let's take this thing through this sprint, right? And, you know, the other side of that coin is to stop taking every deal that comes your way if you're a content creator, you know, focus on the better deals. And as you're growing and your audience is growing alongside you, you know, start to find what it is that you want to focus in on and focus on better content rather than more content. Right. Yeah, one for our Web2 listeners, like one concept I ask people to always think about when working with KOLs and that we think about a lot here. One thing that I've noticed a lot of our clients are surprised at with our Web3 KOL recommendations. A lot of times they say like, hey, this person doesn't have a ton of followers. It's like, well, yes, but there's reasons we work with them. And it comes to that Web2 idea of ECPM. You know, what is your cost per thousand impressions or cost per follower this person has? And how likely is that to deliver your end result? And we look at all that, and that's why I've seen a lot of the plans that Jerry and the team put together here. It's a lot of like smaller and mid-sized content creators for these reasons of what is the quality and efficacy of their content? How likely is it to reach the needle in the haystack of like those ideal Web3 native users? Because you can, candidly, you can make your social following on Twitter be whatever number you want it to be if you employ certain black hat strategies. But yeah, I think that concept of what is the value you're getting relative to the price rather than who has the biggest following is something that's highly relevant for content creators. Yeah. Impressions and and Web3 are really weird thing, right? Because what is this, the quality of like, you know, those impressions or those thousand impressions, right? It varies so, so significantly per creator. And, you know, so it's, it's another thing. Luckily, I mean, we've done a lot of these campaigns, we've pulled a lot of data and we know a lot of these things now, that kind of stuff just varies so, so heavily in the space. And so building every campaign is super unique. Yeah. Dan, I want to go to you here next as one of our team members who is a dual class team member sitting on both a creative and growth team. And I want to double down into the idea of content production and creative. What is the role of creative and what are kind of the creative functions and type of content that Web3 native gaming teams should be focusing on right now? What's going to move the needle the most? And you can touch on, if you like, both Web3 native and bridging to mainstream users. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have a bit of a biased opinion here because I think that creative needs to live at the top of the funnel with in development and overall strategy, and it needs to be there at every step of the way. I think the pitfall in that not happening for a lot of projects is being a project founder in Web3 is a fairly exhaustive effort. You have a lot of hats to wear, and on top of that, you've got a community that has a fairly direct line of access to you at all times too, which can be a bit distracting. Uh, Sorry, the Slack distracted me. I just keep getting hit on Slack. I think uh, a lot of founders will fall a little short on this side of things because being a project founder in Web3 is an exhaustive endeavor. You have to wear a lot of different hats when you're running a project. And more so than in Web2, you have a direct line to your community, um, which can be painful at times. They expect and demand a lot. A lot of them have a very extractive behavior with you. They demand, demand, demand. And that level of ask from them is in perpetuity. You never really get on the other side of that. You can go deliver the world to them. And two months later, it's, well, what have you done for me recently? Right. And I think a very strong creative landscape is important to make sure that you're showcasing what you're trying to with your game. The strategy that I like to employ with people is to do a two-week calendar. Make sure that you have pieces of content that go out on a daily basis for those two weeks, but then you're able to kind of slot in any virality that happens in our space, which as we know happens every week something interesting or crazy is going to happen in our space. Staying on top of your content and being able to kind of slot your staff over to focusing on that thing that's happening is really great because you can then funnel the engagement pie of that particular topic back into what you're doing with your project. It's a really great way to get new eyeballs and new users into your project. Yeah, well said. 